photovoltaic, this is current. This is actually what's going on at the moment. Um, 10 stores out of our 19 um, were able to have them fitted. Some either didn't have um, a roof space they had, because they had car parking on top of it or for whatever reason. But 10 stores currently um, are having uh, installations of solar PV. Uh, 39,000 panels in total. Um, this is our Milton Keynes store. Um, this here is a distribution centre in Holland. To give you an idea of the scale of it, that little thing there that I'm just pointing out, right in that corner, that's a set of steps that the maintenance engineer walks over. So it kind of gives you the scale of the installations that we're talking about. And when I, I went and looked at it, was fantastic, really interesting looking at how they designed it and what the panels did and, and talking to the engineers. I had to have a uh, interpreter because the engineer that had been brought in was German, the installation crew were Lithuanian, and there was one labourer who was an English person. And I think in regard to this whole training and development of our people, it's so important because this is a global sourcing project. This isn't something that we've just decided to do in the UK. And of course, it's cheaper to get local labour to do these kind of installations. But when you can't find the local labour in the market, you go for the people that have got the technical skills. So I, I just applaud the, 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 the idea of this kind of skills academy to upskill people, because this is coming. This is definitely coming. Um, other investments, um, we've recently bought a wind farm up in, in Scotland. Um, that's going to provide another 30% of our moving towards that target of, of 100%, sourcing 100% renewable energy. And again, you know, this is now coming and it's, it's just a requirement really. We're, we're moving in this direction and I'm, I'm absolutely sure that will be the curve for other British retailers. And then into transport issues. Um, I'm speaking at Fleet, the Fleet Congress this afternoon at the Motorcycle Museum and um, they're probably not going to be really impressed with that bottom line that we reduced our vehicle fleet, Milton Keynes, Gateshead and our London stores and then have hybrid vehicles in the remaining fleet. And we just sat and we said, well, what's the environmental impact of a car? Because we've got a set policy on the emission levels that can come from our company cars. And we said, well, actually, the impact is in the manufacture of it. 500,000 litres of water used to manufacture every single car. So the management team said, well, let's get rid of it. Let's get rid of 40%. Well, he said 50%. We managed 40%. But then the backup of that, providing tools for our customers. So this is a live time in Southampton, live time departure board for local trains and public transport. And we're encouraging the stores to interact with their local authorities. This is Wembley. Um, they wanted to call it the Meatball Express for some reason, but they didn't get away with that. Um, but that bus runs regularly. And then this is a, a new start for us. This is our first charging point in one of our stores. Um, to trial what technology we want for the next new store. Because Reading, hopefully we're going to open in a year or so's time, um, we want that to be as green as we can make it. And so there'll be charging points for our customers. Uh, we, although there aren't fleet vehicles that will support it, we want to have electric vehicles on home delivery, so we'll provide the services for our home delivery companies and our customers. And in August, we had a film crew on the site recently. In August, this was the most used charging point in London. So we think that there's real opportunities there. And, and to try and get that in, to try and get people could, that could support us with that, to try and get our own in-store engineers to be able to understand what the requirements were, there was a bit of a skills gap there. So what can you do? Um, I'm going to be a bit controversial now. Don't ever invite me to dinner around your house because I take pictures Anybody where, know where that is? You wouldn't recognise it because there's no people in it, but it's outside here last night at 8 o'clock. Every single light on, or it seemed, in the building. Um, anybody that wants to kind of introduce BMS systems to the NEC or something, or um, variable speed drives for the uh, escalators that were all running. I did find one that was off, and I thought, oh, it's got a variable speed drive. You know where you walk and it starts up? It wasn't. It was just switched off. But, um, but this is what's going on. You know, people don't understand. People don't... This is costing hundreds of thousands of pounds. I've got no doubt about that. Not a single person in the place and lit up like, like um, uh, Blackpool Illuminations. 
Sorry if there's any NEC people here, I apologise. Um, but some, some hints and tips for your own business. I mentioned it at the beginning. Look at your bills and invoices. You know, we're all, it's all, people are tight for money at the moment, but people are wasting money. Um, share best practice and engage your own team. You know, that idea about the flat pack um, tea lights, that came from a co-worker on the shop floor. Your own people have got brilliant ideas. Use them. Define a policy and statement. What are you about? What do you want to do and what goals have you got? I can't stress enough, I really believe that this is a growth industry in the UK. And if you're into this, the amount of times that I get asked to talk about it, um, it's, it's absolutely going to be the thing that's going to be hitting real big time in the next couple of years. And invest in quality, it pays off in the long term. You know, the short term quick fix, you'll get seen through um, the example that you made about the solar, you know, the, the add-on you know, the quick fix. It doesn't work. And it will come back and bite you. It always does. And then your service office, please don't greenwash. You'll be caught out. People will see through it. And um, we say in retail that if you have a good experience, you tell three people. If you have a bad experience, you tell 20. Look for innovations in the market and look at colleges. You know, the ideas that kids are bringing out and young students are bringing out. And then also look under the rocks too. And have a look, you know, we talked about cowboys, but what are the cowboys doing right? Because people are going to them and they're investing in them. What are they doing right? Is it their price strategy? I'll tell you what it is. It's probably their marketing. They're very good at marketing. And so can you learn something from what they're, get, they're giving? So I'm going to finish there. Before any, anybody says anything, that is not a child labor photograph. Um, that is actually one of the eco tours that we do. Um, that's my environmental specialist in Belfast. And the kids get a little eco tabard, eco warrior on the back. And it's, uh, it's uh, really good. So anyway, so Tommy. Well, can I say, first of all, Charlie, yes, well deserved. What a fantastic presentation. And your statistics are overwhelming. And I think for anyone in business, this is obviously the way that we've got to go in this country and play catch up with Germany. Fantastic presentation. I was extremely impressed. And with regard to IKEA kitchens, we've okay, used stop, them. Stop there, stop no, there. we've <laughs> used them extensively, and we've never had a problem. And we'll continue to use them in top quality installations. So well done. Um, first, now, is there any quick Charlie? Don't disappear yet, because uh, I think there may well be some questions that uh, people want to ask you. So I'll come out and I'll uh, bring the mic out, and you can ask Charlie whatever questions you'd like. So who's first? Don't be shy. Come on now. I had the same problem with young students, but you guys are a lot more experienced. There's a few grey heads out there. There must be some questions you want to ask him, take him to task. We have one at the back. Paul Hurt. Um, I'd like to ask a question regarding your policy of employing local contractors in stores rather than having a turnkey contract with a national facility provider. Again, that's, that's probably a technical question for the properties guys. But as I understand it, and I was part of the project team for, um, as a positive, and I didn't add this in, for the f probably the first time, um, I was invited to sit at the initial, very first initial meeting where the main contractors were brought together. Before we've even got planning permission, what does the store want to look like. So all of these contractors, now the first thing I'd say is that they are all UK level contractors. As I understand it, they then will recruit locally. Now some of the things like the, um, uh, the solar PV project, for instance, that was a, um, uh, a we call it a frame agreement. So we're going to buy for 300 stores worldwide. But I still would argue the point back a little bit. If the right skills are in the right place, they'll find those and they'll recruit them. It's, it's, cheaper, to, it's cheaper to recruit people locally. So I don't know if that... that I'm, I'm not really, really the, the specialist in, in uh, the property side of things. Well, that's but not going to get you offline. OK. Well, he wants, he wants come on, to come, come, on come back. Come back again. Now, what I was particularly thinking of, you're talking about long-term relationships. Yeah. Uh, a day-to-day -day maintenance for once the store is up and running could be best served by a local contractor who's familiar with the store and familiar with the people, rather than drawing somebody in from 50, 60, or 100 miles away who probably doesn't even know where the store is. Well, we have an in-store maintenance team. 
So we have two or three engineers on site. But what we did do is um, we brought in a special specialist UK HVAC set of engineers for specialist training because that, you know, to keep on top of those pretty vital systems in the stores. So I'd say we've got a bit of a balance there. We have a UK contractor that provides us with that really specialist stuff. And then we have an in-store maintenance team of uh, two or three people. So no hope for a local relationship with a local contractor then? Um, I, w I would have said if we've recru recruited local engineers, that is local. I'd, I'd say that that is employing local skills. I've tormented you enough. Thank no, you. That's okay. We'll have a talk afterwards. We'll have a talk afterwards. You're going to get teased. I don't worry about that's that. That's all right. No, I'm okay. Um, is there any other questions? No? You must have been impressed with those statistics, and you might want to question them, surely. Oh, you've obviously converted everyone. We have a question here. Can I have your name first, please? My name's John Lane uh, from Edinburgh. Um, a question for you, Charlie. Have you thought about actually taking maybe um, modern apprentices on yourself and uh, putting together furniture and rather than bringing companies in to do that? Have you actually thought about actually employing your own people to do that? It's an IKEA. In regard to stuff for, for delivery or... or no, for, for actually putting together. I know that you actually put together bedrooms and, and kitchens and companies do that. Have you actually thought about having that, doing that yourself and taking the whole process on? Well, like train? a fitting service yes. for the public. Yeah, yeah. Correct, yeah. yeah, and it's on the list of... Um, the, the difficulty is with this, and, and this is in kitchens again, we can provide a brilliant kitchen. You know... If you walk into some of these really f nice um, showrooms on the high street where they give you a lovely cup of coffee and some nice brochures and they charge you 15 grand for a kitchen. Um, that would be a cheap one. Probably. Yeah. And we can, do it, we can do the same thing of the same, probably better quality for maybe five or six or even less. The, but the key thing, and Tommy will tell you, is the key thing is the installation. And to try and get a UK and Ireland service offer where we can get the same standards because the customer doesn't care whether it's Tommy putting it in or you putting it in. They only know that they bought it from Ikea. So we have to stand by our service. So, but it is something that's been worked on, the service package, if you like. The reason I was thinking, of, sorry, the reason I was thinking about that as well is that you could probably take the kids right through the process that you've taken us through today as part of the training and that being building the products prior to actually putting together in someone's house as well, which I think would be very good for them, you know, to, to do that in, in a training service. Maybe if I take your email afterwards and we can have a talk about that, yeah, that's because no I, I can put that to our services team definitely. So, yeah. cool. Mm. I can see a slight conflict there from, from your ethos is that you supply basically a flat pack version of something they could go and buy in a high street shop at a cost-effective price, and then you normally leave it up to them to find the installer. So that, of course, takes you away from any problems that the installation will give you. Yep. So I can see, unless you really get a team that are dedicated and sharp and, and then keep that standard across, across the whole range of IKEA stores, it's going to be problematic because you don't want any variation in because uh, yep. it will reflect badly on the store. And I, I can understand the reluctance, but if you can get around that, there may be a, a, yep. a possible chance of doing that in the future. We'd all like to give our, our youngsters a chance, especially on the green ethics that your, the IKEA um, so, uh, speak so loudly about. So, and I think it'd be good schooling for them, but it's a bit of a difficult one. The other, the other thing that we, we um, talk about is a thing called price transparency. And um, there's no such thing as free... There's no such thing as free home delivery or interest-free. Somebody is paying for that. Yeah. And what we say is if you're a customer and you come in and buy a kitchen, the reason you have to go and pay for the delivery charge is because um, you turn up in a van. Mm. So if you turn up in a van and take it home and you've saved yourself 50 or 60 quid on the delivery charge, but you say, well, actually, from a convenience point of view, I want home delivery you have to pay for the service. And that, that's where this, this free thing, you know, when people are offering free delivery, they're not. Well, it's not free for me. Everybody's Because I have it. to supply a van, although I might be going down. So in a way, I'm subsidising it. So yeah. that's purely for convenience and my choice. Yeah, and that's, and we, 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 and that's where we, we do our bit. We say, we do our bit, you do your bit. And that's why we keep the prices low. And getting into areas that we're not really experts in. So... And, but 
at the same time. And there's time. also a lot of variables once you step into that, into that area. Custo and customers turning around and then saying to us, that we're moving into this area reluctantly, but it's because customers are asking us. And so we, we have to, but it, at the moment it's consistency. And of course it's not one tradesman we're dealing with because you're going to deal with sparkies, you're going to deal with plumbers, you're going to be dealing with tilers, you're going to be dealing with the installers. So it, it becomes a bit of a world of hurt for us. I think I'll just come up with a, maybe a possible solution. If IKEA paid me to do an in-store video and an online video for people, showing them how to do it, maybe there'd be no need to, for you to employ teams around the country to do the installation. I've got, I've got about 750 on me. Is that <laughs> right? Never miss out on an opportunity. <laughs> That's my mind. Is there any other questions? Thank you. No? You're all done? Well, thank you very much. I think a round of applause is well-deserved. Charlie, thank you very much. And I think, Keith, you're going to come up and round up.